Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is where it all began. Remember that incredible rally we had? And people came out, and it was like this. It was packed and incredible. And people said, something's going on there, right? That was the beginning, wasn't it? That was the beginning. And if you remember, even though you don't have to vote for me, maybe four years, we'll take a look, right? But you know what? I said, I'm coming back to see you in Alabama, right? And this is our last rally, our last stop. And I just want to thank the people of Alabama. And I want to start by wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. But I'm here today for one reason, and that is to thank the incredible people that I recognize so many of you. I have so many friends from Alabama. But to thank the people of Alabama, we are really the people that love this country. We have so many people that love this country all over. I went, I went to a little victory tour, but really they were thank you tours in Pennsylvania, all over. But this is Alabama. And if you don't mind, we're thanking the people of Alabama, and we're thanking the people of the South. Because, boy, did we do well. Boy, did we do well in the South. So, I don't know if you noticed, I added that on. The people of the South. Because I'll tell you, in fact, I said if I lost, I think I'm going to move to Alabama or someplace in the South. Because we won. We didn't win like, okay, here. We won at a record setting. Nobody's ever had the numbers that we had. So I just want to thank you. This is our last stop. And I'll tell you what, there is no better place to celebrate than right here, OK? So thank you. You propelled to victory a grassroots movement, the likes of which the world, frankly, has never seen before. And you know, if I was saying something that was slightly off, these very dishonest people up here, they'd be They'd be correcting. They'd be correcting us, right? They'd be correcting us. And because of the weather, by the way, the buses are still pouring in, so they'll I think we shouldn't wait. Do you agree? We're just gonna so they're coming in and we're just gonna wait. You'll explain to them as they walk in we're having a great time, right? But the incredible patriots of this stadium today defied the pundits, defied the pollsters and the special interests, and delivered a historic win for the American worker and for the American people, totally. I want to thank so many great people, but having Franklin Graham, who was so instrumental, I tell you, we won so big with evangelical Christians. We won so big. Where is Franklin? He's around. He's right there. What a great... There he is. Look at him. He worked so hard. Thank you, Franklin. Anybody that has anything to do with the great Billy Graham, I love. And that's the son. And that son is great. So, so thank you. And Billy is doing well. well. I mean, he's 98 years old, but he's doing well. I also want to give a very special thank you to the men and women of the United States military. Incredible. Incredible. Because not only did we win with evangelicals by massive numbers, not by like two points, like by many, many, many points, but we won with the military and we won with law enforcement, big league. So we are in your debt. And we will never, ever let you down. We will honor your service and sacrifice that begins with restoring respect for the American flag, right? The American flag. 
which has been taking abuse lately. And I can only speak for myself, but I don't like it, okay? I don't like it. And we're going to finally take care of our great veterans. And that's another group. So amazing. So amazing, the veterans. And we're going to be naming somebody very, very soon to head up the VA. And uh, we're going to get it taken care of, folks. We're going to get it's time. It's time. People that come into the country illegally, people that come into the country and cause problems, they're taken care of better than our vets in many cases. So, yeah. Time to take care of our vets. Do not worry, we are going to build the wall, okay? Don't worry. Don't even think about it. We're also going to rebuild our badly depleted military. We have the greatest people on earth. Our military is depleted. But we will be smart with how we spend our money. We're not going to spend $4.2 billion on Air Force One. Is that okay? I mean, we all like beautiful aircraft, but Boeing is going to do a much less expensive job than that. They ordered a new plane. They're in the process. And I said, how are you doing? Well, there's massive cost overruns. I said, no, there's not. There's not going to be cost overruns. So you're going to see it. Uh, we got in sort of toward the end, but that's okay. We got in in time. We got in in time. But no $4.2 billion airplane. America will be a strong nation again. But we will also be a fair and just nation. There is a very, very special guest, okay? And I want to bring that guest on stage in a moment. He is someone who cares deeply about justice, who believes all people are equal in the eyes of the law. He is a great, great man. He's an Alabama native. He could have run for the rest of his life. Nobody even wants to run against him. He spent 15 years as a federal prosecutor, served as the Alabama State Attorney General, and represented you in the United States Senate for 20 years, including 20 years on the Judiciary Committee. And people don't even know, because we think of him as a senator, he was a great, great, legendary prosecutor. A lot of people forgot that. He appeared right here at this stadium 16 months ago and put on a Make America Great Again hat. He was the first senator to endorse me, and really the first major endorsement I had. And he never endorsed a presidential candidate and very few candidates before. But he saw what I had to say, and he saw the response from the people of Alabama. He's someone I'm very proud to call a friend and a man I've chosen to be. And by the way, this is a great honor for the state of Alabama. Remember that. To be the next Attorney General of the United States, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. Come on up, Jeff. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. What a great honor it is to have you back in my hometown, Mobile, Alabama. I do remember that event 16 months ago. How many of you were here on that day? 
It was an eye-opening event for the entire world and, and certainly the United States political establishment. I don't think there's any doubt that for your effort and your campaign, Mobile played a historic role in that in, a momentum that built. There's just no doubt about it. I, I, that's, I think, where people began to see that there was, this was more than a normal campaign, but a movement. And uh, I think the American people have spoken in so many ways in this election. Thank you for the honor you've given me, the opportunity to perhaps uh, have a different role in my life. If that would occur, I'd, I would give my honest and best effort every single day to make you proud, the American people proud, to serve everybody with equality and justice. But I want to tell you, uh, this country needs hope. They believe that you have the ability to lead us in a new way. I think they're encouraged by the new and fresh cabinet you're assembling, putting people in there that have determination and dedication. I want to say thank you to Mayor Stimson and his team in the city, uh, to the county and all those who've helped make this possible now and last time. Uh, there's been a really a great thing there. So, Mr. President-elect, thank you so much for the opportunity to work with you, the opportunity to see you develop as a candidate, the opportunity to participate in a movement that I believe can help make America great again. God bless you. He's an amazing man. <laughs> Jeff is an amazing man, and working with him, I know we will make these incredible strides that our country has to make in restoring safety and justice for all of our people. And again, uh, Alabama, I know, because I get so many letters from the people of Alabama and every other form of communication, including tweets. And they are so proud. They are so proud of him, so, and we're proud of him, so thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Fantastic. So great. You know, Jeff talked a little bit about the election and his endorsement, and I think if, I'll, if you want, do you want me to discuss that evening one more time? Because this will be it. Should I? Yes or no? Because I could give you a beautiful, rhetorical, flowing speech, and we can all fall asleep together, right? Or we can discuss it. And this is our last stop, as I said. And I'm really here because I promised you during that wild day that we had in August, a uh, long time ago, seems like a long time ago, and uh, just a lot of things came out of that day. It opened up the eyes of the media, even the media that dislikes us all. It opened up. No, but it opened up. It opened up their eyes. And it began to a certain extent here. It began on June 16th. Remember the escalator, coming down the escalator with Melania. And I talked about, I talked about crime. I talked about borders. And I talked about trade. Nothing much changed. We just got more severe, and frankly, things got worse. Things got worse, and it made more and more of an impact. So when I announced, we uh, had a big primary. We had a total of 17 people. And I remember they did a, a report one time, and it was interesting, but they did a report, and it was about three or four months into the campaign, and they said, Trump has four months of experience doing this, and my opponents had 236 years, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right? All right. It's 236. In other words, you add up 25 years and 30 years and 20 years, and it's going to start to pour. I will stay out here to hell with the suit, right? I didn't know it rained in Alabama.
But you know, rain is good luck, right? Rain is good luck. So, and I never liked this suit anyway, so we'll throw it away after. But, but it was an amazing, it was really an amazing thing. So we did that and we got into the general and we all know what happened to the primaries. And they say they were the meanest primaries in the history of elections in this country. And they were mean, they were nasty. And I generally got good support, Ben Carson and Chris Christie and a lot of other people supported. But, and a lot, ultimately, most of them came around. A few didn't. A few, a few came around right after the election, but, you know, that's not quite the same thing. But we started off, and it was amazing, because that evening, we were set up incorrectly by the media. They all said that Texas was in play. They said Georgia was in play. They said Utah was in play. And they weren't in play. And I never thought they were in play. He shouts out, liars. Only in Alabama can we do that. <laughs> Liars. But, but what happened is we tend to believe the media. You know, we believed Walter Cronkite years ago, right? This is not Walter Cronkite anymore, folks. This is not the great Walter Cronkite. So we tend to believe him. And yet, I'd go out and have crowds like this. You had to see the crowd we had in Pennsylvania, the crowd we had in Ohio and Iowa. Always a massive crowd. And even after the election, this is just a thank you from me to you and the folks. But, but to have crowds. We had a crowd last night that the manager said was 30,000 people. And I read the Palm Beach Post tomorrow. And, you know, the one that just came out. And there was a line in the second paragraph. Now, it was one of the biggest crowds that I've seen. You couldn't even see the end of it. It was a field. It was actually a field. Last night, Orlando. It was incredible. And I read the Palm Beach Post today. It said, Donald Trump spoke before hundreds of people. I said, <laughs> right? Very dishonest. Very, very dishonest. But that's okay. Hundreds of people is not 25 or 30,000 people. Do we agree with that? But, but they know. They know what they're doing. They all know what they're doing, but I guess it didn't work because we're here together, folks, right? The movement. But, but we've been hearing, and I've been hearing the Texas, and I go to Texas, and we'd have these massive crowds. We had one crowd in Texas that filled up a stadium. The line was so long, and those are the people that didn't get in. The line was like 30 blocks long. It went all the way back to a highway in Houston. And I said, how are we losing Texas or how are we tied in Texas? Anyway, but they said Texas is in play. That means we're doing badly, right? Because we're supposed to win as Republicans and Georgia. And as soon as the polls open, they go, breaking news, Donald Trump wins the state of Texas, right? <laughs> Donald Trump wins. This is like immediately. We win Georgia. We won Utah. And did you see my competition in Utah? This guy came out of nowhere. I mean, my wife said, trust me, he's not doing well. But they had him even with me, and they had me maybe not winning Utah. And by the way, as soon as the polls, the real polls came out, we won it in a massive landslide. And that guy, I don't know what he was trying to prove. All we're going to do is lose the United States Supreme Court, potentially. If he... Okay, so let's assume the race was closer because we won by a lot. It wasn't even close. But let's assume, let's assume we needed Utah, which frankly we thought we needed. We really thought we needed Utah. And let's assume we didn't win Utah. So what, what does he gain? You know what he gains? I, I won't say the name of a magazine guy who worked so hard. So many of these people misread us for two years. They misread us. And they're still misreading us. And I love it. I love it. They are still misreading us. So we won them. But then Ohio came in, and we were almost 10 points up in Ohio. We were 10 points, more than 10 points up in Iowa. And Iowa, you never win like that, the Republicans, certainly. And so we won them by big numbers. And then we came down to Florida, and Florida was even. Florida was even that whole night, the big, big, beautiful state. I love Florida. And it's even. 
And then all of a sudden, we hadn't hit the panhandle, right? Anybody live in the panhandle? Oh, I love the panhandle. And, you know, and you had to see the people. They were so devastated. They were the media, the anchors. So they've been saying for months and months that Trump is going to get absolutely killed. I remember three weeks before the election, one of them, I won't say the name, he said, how is Trump going to lead the rest of his life? Because this is one of the most devastating defeats. He will suffer so badly. And his whole career, which is true, which is good, like your football team, right? How good are they? Frankly, frankly, all of your football teams, they do well, right? But this guy, and he was saying it with such joy, how is he going to, they were talking about it's three and a half weeks before the primary. I went, I told my wife, I said, man, that was pretty bad to hear. His whole life has been based on winning. And he is going to suffer one of the greatest defeats in the history of politics. Right, Jeff? That's what they were saying. We were going to lose the presidency. I was going to take down with me the House, and I was going to take down the Senate. And it was going to go down as the single greatest defeat in the history of politics. And three weeks later, we had the single greatest victory in the history of politics. That's what they said. We won. You know, I don't know if you know this. Nationwide. Thank you. USA is right. Made in the USA. We're going to put that sign up. Made in the USA. But, you know, on our products that we're going to start making a lot of. But it was like this, you know, terrible kind of a thing. Now, he was saying it with, he was very happy. But we then went back, and I went back to work. I went really down to work. And I didn't do interviews. All I did is stuff like this, the rallies. And I didn't want to do interviews because they'd cut your sentence off. They'd cut it in half. You'd make a beautiful statement, and all of a sudden you'd say, I didn't say that. Well, when they leave the back part of the sentence off, or they don't talk about the other half of the paragraph, it's not so good, right? And I said, I don't want to deal with these people. And I said, if you want to quote me, quote me from the speeches. Now I get nice quotes. But even there, they'll take, like, if you're doing a line, a funny line. I'll give you an example of what happened uh, today. One of the papers wrote a story. I was talking a lot of fun over the last couple of days. I said, you know, prior to the election, you people were strong and vicious and violent, and you wanted to win. I'm saying it kiddingly, right? And you wanted to win, but you were vicious, as vicious as I've ever seen. And we all were laughing and having fun, right? And then I said, and after the election, meaning last night or the night before where I was in different places, like Pennsylvania, Hershey, Pennsylvania was unbelievable. But I said, and now you're mellow, you're low key, you're just sitting back, you won, you won, you're chilling out. Okay, so I said that, and everybody laughed, and they had fun. So today, a couple of the uh, groups, uh, I won't tell you which station, but it's, it's ridiculous. They're saying, see, we were right. Donald Trump is calling his people vicious. Donald Trump. He said that these people are so bad. So we can't have a little humor, folks, because if we have humor, they're going to take it. And, you know, when you report it or write it out, it does sound that way. But when you see it, you know exactly what we're talking about. So they're very dishonest people. But we go down, but we understand we shouldn't change, right? We can't change. Because people get it, obviously, because I think I just heard a statement that we won like 2,700 counties. Where's Kellyanne? Kellyanne, where's our great Kellyanne? Come here. Come here. I got to get her up. She told me 2,700. So she didn't know I was going to do this. She didn't know I was going to do this. Where is Hope? Where is Hope? Hope, get up here, Hope. Hope, get up here. She's always on the phone talking to the reporters, trying to get the reporters to straighten out their dishonest stories. Hope and Kellyanne. So Kellyanne... Kellyanne, and you've seen her, has anyone like, you know, like how about every day seen her on television, right? So in the history of politics in this country, she is the first campaign manager to ever win.
as a female. And she did a fantastic job. Kellyanne, tell them about the uh, county. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi again. So, your president-elect Donald Trump won over 2,600 counties. It's huge. He also won 31 of the 50 states, 306 electoral votes. And had any of those graphics on TV, sir, said, road to the popular vote, we would have been in California and Illinois and New York, and we would have won the popular vote. But every graph has said, road to 270, so we figured we'll get 306 just to have a little cushion. <laughs> and there's one other thing that doesn't get a ton of coverage, which I think is incredibly impressive about the Trump-Pence victory. Donald Trump, your next president, turned 200 counties across this country from President Obama in 2012 to President Trump in 2016. Now, Hope Hicks is a tremendously talented person. She started off with us right from day one. She used to be in my real estate company. I said, what do you know about politics? She said, absolutely nothing. I say, congratulations, you're into the world of politics, right? She knew nothing. And she was there the first day, and she was fantastic. And I just say a couple of words, Hope. You know, she's a little shy, but that's okay because she is really, really talented. Hope, say a couple of words. Hi. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. And thank you, Donald Trump. We had a great team. We had a great team. So the other side, when we won so big in Ohio, and we won so big in Iowa, we weren't supposed to win like that. And we had those horrible exit polls. Remember the exit polls started coming out? And everybody in this, you know, they did that to depress the vote. Because in places like California and other places, you know, they see it because there's a three-hour gap. And they say, I love Trump, but I'm not going to waste my time. Because these exit polls came out, and my daughter and her husband, Jared, called up, Ivanka and Jared, and they said, Dad, it's looking really bad. I said, what's looking bad? I can't. I just left Michigan. I started speaking almost at 1 o'clock in the morning on Election Day. We had 31,000 people, inside and out. And I said, what's looking bad? And she said, those exit polls are just horrible. And it's not looking good. So I went to my wife. I said, you know what? I don't feel badly about this because I worked as hard as you can work. Don't forget that last month. I did two and three speeches a day like this. Big crowd. And I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about it. Maybe I'm wrong about it. Maybe you should say I didn't work hard and therefore I lost. You could use it. But I, I really did. I worked as much as you could possibly physically do. I don't think anyone's ever... Anybody, and they've written this, I don't think anybody has ever worked harder in the last month of a presidential campaign than I did. Uh, nobody. And I covered 17 states, and I went to Maine. I needed one, because they all said, you can not get to 270, right? Remember? Well, they'd say it a little different. They'd say, there is no path to 270 for Donald Trump. He will not win the election. So I said, I'll get to 270. I'm going to go to Maine 2, which is 1. Okay, it's got a half. It's called Maine 2. And I went there. I got it too, by the way. I got that one vote. So, right? I got it. I got that one vote. But I went to Maine. And that's the beauty of this electoral system. You know, the other, if you go with, like, the popular vote, I'd go... New York State, California, back, forth, back. It would be much easier. The problem is every other place, you'd stop in Florida, you'd stop in Texas, you wouldn't see any place else. 
it would be so much easier. I think I'd actually do better, but you'd never see most of the country. The electoral vote, and I, I never appreciated it until now, how genius it was, what they had in mind. Because at the time, they didn't want everybody going to Boston and New York, and everything else would be forgotten. And now it's the same thing. It's genius. I'm telling you, it's genius. I went to 17 states. I went to states. I went to states that, you know, you just wouldn't go to. And they were great. And I went to places, frankly, that normally you wouldn't be thinking about too much. And they were incredible. And they came through for me. Most of them, most of them really, really came through. So then you had the Hillary people saying that, Let's see. Right? We won. But you had the Hillary people on, and they were saying, we are going to win the state of Florida. We have information. We're going to win. I mean, maybe their information was how many people voted illegally. Maybe that was the information. They had. But of course, you know, when I say that, they'll say, isn't that a terrible thing that he said? Isn't that terrible? You got to look into that, folks. But the problem is, when you win Florida by that much, there's nothing much they can do. You can't have people and numbers that's bigger than the number of people. So they said, you can't win, and we're going to, you know, do great. And we end up breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. And these people are standing. I remember they had, they had one guy. I guess he was mid-level. And he was saying, we're going to win the state of Florida. He's representing her. We're going to win the state of Florida. We're going to win North Carolina. But Florida is really looking strong. And the announcer said, excuse me one minute. We have something breaking. Breaking news. Trump has won the state of Florida. And the guy's standing like, what happened? <laughs> but then they said that I can't win North Carolina. And by the way, they raised $2 billion. They spent so much more money than me. I spent like peanuts compared to what they spent. Under budget and ahead of schedule. Does that sound good? Yeah. Under budget and ahead of schedule. Like we're going to have our roads built and our planes built. And our F-35 is one of the most expensive. Now, we're going to straighten things out, but under budget. So what happens, you know, in the old days, you have some people here that will tell you, when you spend less money and win, that's much better than the other way. And I had cases where I was tied or up in a poll, but she had spent in a state like 50 million and I had spent like 2 million. And they said, Donald Trump is not spending the money. Like, and I'm saying, wait, that's a good thing. They don't understand it. That's actually a good thing. If I can do that, if I can do that, it's a good thing. I remember in the primary in New Hampshire, I love New Hampshire, and in New Hampshire, I spent a tiny amount, almost nothing. And another person, so I can't say anymore because they're, they're all friends of mine now, but so I won't. <laughs> but another person spent like $22 million. I spent nothing and I won. And they said before I won, like this person was doing great because he was spending much more money. I said, yeah, but I'm going to win the state. So. Remember, for all the young people here, when you spend less money and you win, that's a good thing, not a bad thing, all right? <laughs> Trying to the press. So then the next state was North Carolina, which is great. And they spent, they outspent me five to one at least. But I had great, I had my sons there and Lara and everybody. We had incredible people there. And they came out and again, Breaking news, Donald Trump has won North Carolina. That was unbelievable. And then Pennsylvania, we were doing so good in Pennsylvania, but every Republican for like 38 years has lost Pennsylvania, some large, ridiculous number. And they always called it the bride that got away. I don't even know if that's politically correct when the press says it. 
Now, if I say it, they'll say it's not politically correct, but I always heard them say it, so for them it's fine, right? But they say the bride that got away because you thought every Republican for 30 years thought they won the state of Pennsylvania. It's a big state. And they didn't. So I said, we're going to win Pennsylvania. We had three congressmen there who were incredible. They said, we're going to win. But I didn't want to tell that to anybody because everybody thought they were going to win anyway. So we're looking, and there's 1% left. And I'm leading by a lot. And even if I lost 100% of the 1%, there was no way I could lose the state. But they would not call the state. Now, I knew. In fact, I started accepting victory. Because if I win Pennsylvania, now I win. And the other side is saying they're going to win Pennsylvania. But actually, when they looked at the numbers, they understood it, too. It was over. And then we had a surprise. Breaking news. Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Right? And people are saying, where did that come from? What happened? Because we weren't exposed. We thought we were going to do well there, but we won it. And now they're in trouble. They're really in trouble. And I don't know if you saw there. They had the most beautiful stage. In fact, I wanted to swap stages with them around midway through. I wanted to maybe swap. You know, they had that beautiful picture of uh, the country and magnificent. You know, they had, uh, they spent $7 million on fireworks. And they knew something was wrong. One of their people, who's a high-level guy, said, we made a big mistake. We made a big mistake. We're going to lose. And he was telling that to people. And I felt we were going to win. But then all of a sudden, they canceled their fireworks a weekend. And I said, because you know what I found? Fireworks just don't work when you lose. Do you agree with that? Did you ever see one of your football teams, when they lose, have fireworks in the stadium? No. No, it's called depression. But they cancel their fireworks. And then just to be cute, we sent an offer in. We offered to buy their fireworks for five cents on the dollar. But they had a very good company, Grucci or something. Grucci. They had a great company going to do their fireworks. We offered to buy it for five cents on the dollar. We never heard back from them. But they had this incredible, they took the convention center. And I took sort of a small ballroom because if I lost, I want to get out. You know what I did? Here would be my case. I'd come up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. My supporters, I love you folks. I love you. It was a movement. But it was a movement that didn't work. Right? Right? And I would have said, I want to thank my wife. I want to thank my family. Bye-bye. I'm out of here. Right? So I didn't want to really have this huge, expensive thing. So I had a ballroom in the city. But then all of a sudden, we started seeing we were going to win. And we knew we were going to win because we knew we won Pennsylvania, even though they wouldn't call it. They called it at 3 o'clock in the morning. They should have called it like at 1130 in the evening. I think because if you looked at the ratings, they were so high, they were making a fortune by not calling it, all right? But then we won, before Pennsylvania, the state of Michigan. Everyone said, oh. And then they started having the cameras. And then I said it last night. You had one guy who's really good. I mean, he's really good on the maps, right? You know who I'm talking about. And that map was so red. It was so unbelievable. That map that, you know, they used to show it, and it was really depressing. Everything was blue, blue, blue. They had the blue wall. Remember the blue wall that was unbreakable? Boy, did we shatter that wall, right? We shattered that wall. That wall was shattered. That wall will never be the same. So we broke the wall. So now we won Wisconsin. Now we won Michigan. And I'll never forget the guy. He was devastated. This was not in his play. He never even thought of this. And his hand is like quivering, you know, because he, he puts it on the map and the map turns around. <laughs> Donald Trump has won the state of Wisconsin. Oh, no. <laughs> Donald Trump goes, oh, no. Oh, no. No. Please check this. Please check this. Donald Trump has won the state of Michigan. And it's very unfair to the people of Pennsylvania. They never got the glory. It's like the guy that, you know, could rush for one yard and get the glory for it. They didn't get the glory. But we love our people in Pennsylvania because they were there for us, right? So now he goes. So now he goes. Because they've been saying there was no way to get to 270, right? Remember? 
There is no path to 270. And the most they could get me to was 269. Remember that, 269? I never once got above in their minds 269. They get paid a lot of money. They don't know what the hell they're talking about, folks, I'll tell you. I never once, I never once got, Jeff will tell you, I never once got above 269. I was watching it for months. That's where I got upset with Texas. I kept saying, Texas, we're going to win it. So what happens is the 216, and that's why I kept going to Maine. I needed that one. I needed that one. So now what happens is he's up. He says Wisconsin. He says Michigan. And now he goes, there is no path for Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States. Donald Trump and his great movement is president of the United States. So it was pretty great. pretty good. And some sportscasters, really good ones at ESPN, said that's as good as it gets in terms of, they called it entertainment. And it is a little entertainment, but in another way it's not, because we're going to get to work. And now, in a certain way, the hard work begins. And we're going to make great trade deals. And we're going to make you so happy and so proud. And Jeff Sessions is going to make you so happy and so proud. Yeah. For years, the jobs and wealth have been ripped out of our country. Foreign powers have gotten rich, bleeding America dry. And not a lot of people know it better than the people of Alabama and the people of the South in general, because you know what's happened. But that's all behind us. We are going to stand up for the American worker like nobody has ever stood up for that worker before. Our economic agenda can be summed up in three very beautiful words. Jobs, jobs, jobs. There's a woman out there got very excited by those three words. It's exciting though, right? That is why we're going to lower our business tax rate from 35% down to 15%, and you're going to see things happen. We're one of the highest in the world right now, just about the highest, and we're going to be among the lowest, and you're going to see what's going to happen. It's going to be beautiful. That is why we're also going to eliminate job-killing regulations and lift the restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale, oil, natural gas, and beautiful, clean coal. We're going to put our miners back to work. Our miners are going back to work, folks. We're also going to rebuild America's crumbling infrastructure. And boy, does it need it. It needs it. We have spent $6 trillion in the Middle East we could have rebuilt our country three times over. It's time, folks. With all of that, we're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We have no choice. Have no choice. I'm asking Congress to support the construction of new roads, bridges, airports, tunnels, and railways all across this nation. And we will put our people back to work. It's time to help get Americans off welfare and back into the labor market, rebuilding this country with American hands by American workers. My administration will follow two very simple rules, buy American and hire American. And we're going to go back to the old days. We're going back to the old days. Remember 
Made in the USA, you remember? You know, I did this last night. Let's do it again because it's like a free poll. You know, these characters, they'll spend a million dollars for a poll, and you can give me a better answer. Is it made in America or made in the USA? So let's go America first. Made in America or made in... Let's go, wait. Let's go. Let's go America first in USA. Who likes made in America? Who likes made in the USA? Okay. Can we do one more poll? What the hell? It's raining and miserable, but let's do another poll. Who the hell cares? We're all soaking wet by now, so it doesn't matter, right? So, Time Magazine just gave me Person of the Year, right? Nice. Very nice. Always a great honor. Financial Times, the Financial Times, which is a big deal, just gave me Person of the Year. Okay, you ready? Remember, we have half the people here are women. And by the way, thank you, women. I did so great with women. Those polls were so dishonest with women because we did great. You know, I used to go home. My wife said, I don't think any woman in the United States is going to be voting for you based on what they just said. We did great with women. We did great with the African-American community. We did great. Remember, I said, inner cities, I said, what the hell do you have to lose? And they agreed. It's terrible what's going on. We did great with African Americans. We did great with Hispanics. You know, I'm saying we're going to build a wall, but they want it also. They want their jobs protected. They want safety. They don't want drugs pouring into our country. We did great. So here's what happened. So, but we did great with the women, I have to tell you, folks, because that was very embarrassing. I mean, those polls were so wrong. Those polls were wrong in just about everything, weren't they? They were, they were wrong on everything. But, okay, so I get this person of the year from the Financial Times, and I get person of the year from Time Magazine this week. So which is better? Now, remember women, okay? Because if it's a woman that gets it, we have to think about that. So they do it because they want to be politically correct. You run the magazine, you run the Financial Times, or you run Time Magazine. Do you go Man of the Year? Thank you, darling, I love you too. Do you go Man of the Year? Or do you go Person of the Year? We'll do Person first. Which is better, Person of the Year? Wow. Or Man of the Year? Oh, that's what I That's what I think. And it's pretty simple. If it's a woman, you go woman of the year, right? Right? You know, right? They're all saying yes. So anyway, so we had a lot of fun. We've done well. At the center of our agenda is fixing our absolutely terrible trade deals. America is now running, listen to this, nearly $800 billion in annual trade deficits. I asked John Arrigo, the great car dealer, one of the biggest in the country, do you think you could negotiate, John, a slightly better deal than that? So we do all this work with trade, and we're losing, or we have a deficit of over almost $800 billion a year. It's almost like, what are we doing? Who are the people that negotiate these deals? And there's almost no country that we, we do well with. I mean, we have bad deals every country. That is going to change fast. Is that right, Mr. Arrigo? Go buy an Arrigo. Thing. Our country has lost one-third of its manufacturing jobs since NAFTA. One-third. And here's one. When I first saw this, and I can say it because this is the last time I'll be speaking at a rally for maybe a while, you know? They're saying, as president, he shouldn't be doing rallies, but I think we should, right? Yeah. We've done everything else the opposite. 
Well, no, this is the way you get an honest word out. Because you can't give it to them because they're so dishonest. <laughs> they had a clown today. I didn't see it. I didn't read it, but I, I heard about it. They had a clown today in the failing New York Times who said that I wanted to have another World Trade Center catastrophe because it's good for my base. Can you believe this? No, no. No, no. Think of it. Think of it. What kind of a demented person would say that? No, think of it. Thousands of people killed. They said that I wanted to have another catastrophe like that because it's good for my base. Anybody that says that, and this guy is demented. He is, he's a demented person. And that's why the Times is failing. And I went up to see him three weeks ago. I gave it a shot. And I had a great meeting. Everybody said I did great. I, I like everything was great. But they'll never change. They'll never change, Jeff, no matter what you do. They'll never change. That's okay. We did very well without him, right? But what kind of a demented person would say that? You know, it's incredible. But when I saw this and these statistics, I said it must be a typo because it's impossible. We've lost 70,000 factories since China joined the World Trade Organization. Think of that. And I said 700, you mean. I said 7,000 maybe. But the number is 70,000 factories, many of them right from Alabama, and you know it. It's the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. There's never been a jobs theft like's happened to us, and we're going to untheft it, folks. We're going to bring it back, okay? We're going to bring it back. And we're not going to be taken advantage of anymore by all these foreign countries. We are going to have a very new policy for a long time. It hasn't been this way. It's called America First. It's now America First. And if a company wants to fire their workers, leave the great state of Alabama or another state for another country, and then ship their new products right back into our country through a very strong border, by the way, there will be consequences. Right now, they can do that, make the product, Bring it in for nothing. You saw what we did with Carrier Air Conditioner. And go buy Carrier. Go buy Carrier because they were great. We have, we have really thousands of people, if you look at it from a family standpoint, are going to have a great Christmas in Indiana. But we have many of those things happening. Many, many, many. Because if they want to do that, we're going to oppose a 35% tax on those products coming into our country. And you know what? They're not going to move. They're not going to move. Now, why didn't your politicians do this 15 years ago? Because either they're not smart or, and a lot of people don't even understand it, and they always talk about free trade. I want fair trade. I don't want free. I want fair. I love free trade, but I want fair trade. And if they don't do, then we don't do. But it's now 35% tax for a company. So all these companies that think they're going to get rich by firing thousands and thousands of workers in our country, I hope they get rich, but you know what? We're going to get rich, too, because we're going to impose a very large tax on those companies, and we're going to write up that legislation very soon. And when they leave, there are going to be consequences. And you know what's going to happen, though, honestly? They're not going to leave. Not going to work. The model no longer works. The politicians got taken care of by campaign contributions or something else. If it's something else, Jeff Sessions will catch them, right? He will. He will catch them. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to be them. But their politicians got taken care of by campaign contributions or whatever, because it's incredible that we've lost so much. But to be a rich nation, and we are going to be a rich nation again, we also have to be a safe nation. The murder rate has experienced its largest increase in our country in 45 years. Think of it, the murder rate. More people are being murdered than in 45 years. And the press never tells you that. Do they ever write that? No. We are going to support the incredible men and women of law enforcement. And we are going to bring this terrible crime wave to a very rapid end. One of the greatest public safety threats remains open borders. I always say, 
There goes your business. There goes your country. You know, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, they all believed in strong borders. We don't. We fight for countries that most of you have never even heard of before, so they have borders. And yet we don't protect our own borders. But I have a message for the drug dealers, the gang members, and the criminal cartels that are terrorizing all of our citizens in cities and different places throughout the United States. And the message is that your days are numbered. We're getting you out. We're getting you out. We will build a great wall, and we will stop illegal immigration for good, and we will have doors in that wall. And people will come into that wall, and they'll come through that wall by the tens of thousands. But they're coming in legally. Coming in legally. And we will stop the drugs from pouring into our country and totally poisoning our, I mean, what the, what the drugs are doing to our youth. And you have a big problem here, but every state has a big problem. Our youth and more than our youth. But you see it with our youth. And it's astronomical numbers like never before. We will also work to keep our country safe from terrorism. We've seen Islamic terror attacks from Paris to Belgium to Orlando to San Bernardino to the World Trade Center. To the World Trade Center. Think of that. One attack after another after another. So let me state this as clearly as it can be stated. I am going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We have no choice. That includes suspending immigration from regions where it cannot be safely processed or vetted. And I use the term extreme vetting. Is that okay? Extreme. The safety and security of the American people will always come first in the Trump administration. Ethics reform will be a crucial part of our plan as well. We're going to drain the swamp of corruption in Washington, D.C. and stop government officials from trading favors at your expense. We face many, many challenges. The world is a mess. Our country is in trouble. We face many, many challenges. Michelle Obama said yesterday that there's no hope. But I assume she was talking about the past, not the future, because I'm telling you, we have tremendous hope, and we have tremendous promise and tremendous potential. We are going to be so successful as a country again. We are going to be Amazing. And I, I actually think she made that statement not meaning it the way it came out. I really do. Because I met with President Obama and Michelle Obama in the White House. My wife was there. She could not have been nicer. I honestly believe she meant that statement in a different way than it came out. Because I believe, I believe there is tremendous hope and beyond hope. We have such potential. This country has such potential. You watch. It's going to be so special. Things are going to happen like you haven't seen happen in many, many decades. This is truly an exciting time to be alive. The script is not yet written. We do not know what the page will read tomorrow. But for the first time in a long time, what we do know is that the pages will be authored by each and every one of you. It's a movement. Don't forget, they didn't know you existed until Election Day. Then they said, where the hell did all those people come from, right? Where did they come from?
They came in by the millions and millions and millions, set records in many areas, set records here. We set a record here in Alabama. They said, where did those people come from? And now they're going to work really hard over the next four years. But if we want to go for another four years, I think we're going to make it. Do you agree? I actually think the next four years are going to be a lot easier if you want to know the truth. We're going to do a great job. You, the American people, will now again be in charge. Your voice, your desires, your hopes, your aspirations will never again fall on deaf ears. Never again. The forgotten men and women of this country, and they were forgotten. By the way, you're not forgotten any longer. You will never be forgotten again. Together, we will raise incomes and bring back our jobs. We will repeal the disaster known as Obamacare and create new health care reforms that work for you and for your family. We will reestablish the rule of law, defend the Second Amendment. Very important. And Franklin will be very happy with this. Protect religious liberty. And appoint justices to the United States Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. We will heal our divisions and unify our very, very divided country. When Americans are unified, there is nothing we cannot do. No task is too great, no dream too large, no goal beyond our reach, nothing, nothing. There's nothing like us. There's nothing and nobody like us. My message today is for all Americans, from all parties, all beliefs, all races, all walks of life. Whether you are African American, Hispanic American, Asian American, we're all American. And we're all united by one shared destiny. So I'm asking everyone to join this incredible movement. Here is my request for all of you. Never, ever give up. Can't give up. I should have given up in this campaign five times. I should have given up, according to them, ten times. I could take you over ten different things that happened where people would have given up. But I never gave up. Never gave up. I should have given up, but I never gave up, right? Never, ever give up. Never stop believing. And never, ever stop dreaming. And if you do that, then all together, we will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you, Alabama. God bless you, Mary.